As, as Matt said, I've been uh, at Anglian Water for 23 years and I've been in, in an innovation role. I've been head of innovation for about 14, going on 15 years. Uh, and I must admit, uh, I've seen the, um, the, the, the processes around innovation, the way we've made innovation more explicit with our regulator, the way we've collaborated with other industries. Uh, I've seen quite a swing uh, of a pendulum in, in, in all those areas. Um, so what I'd like to focus on today is how uh, at Anglian Water we've moved more towards an open innovation model which really means asking a question to the world and saying I've got this problem uh, and, and, and trying to somehow manage good ideas back into our business so we can uh, make our business more um, effective um, and, 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 um, and secure. Okay, so um, I'll talk a little bit about uh, different approaches to innovation and some of the advantages and disadvantages of, of doing it different ways. Um, presenting challenges, what, what I mean by that is that to do innovation effectively, I think organisations, whatever industry you're in, it, it, we, you need clear goals clear goals that everybody in the organization from director level to the front line can buy into and it actually means something to them and and, and you know there are many t years back at Anglian Water when targets and measures have been so numerous so confusing it's it's not been easy to see the wood for the trees and I think we've moved to a different place now on that um, the key to this is really how we've engaged with our supply chain uh, and I actually think there's probably more innovation by doing that bit well than anywhere else in the water industry. Um, a WIN, which is the Water Innovation Network, that's a specific example uh, where we've created this innovation hub in the east of England. Uh, and, and, and it's actually growing and bringing in different industries and trying, it's starting to drive uh, cost-effective uh, solutions into the business. And just some thoughts moving forward, which will probably change through the discussion anyway. <coughs> so, um, one, one slide I wish I had today, but I've actually got a presentation to the board tomorrow, and, and I don't know if I've got it right. Um, but it's actually um, a strategy map, uh, and I've really struggled with this, because as Nick said, innovation is not just about technology, it's about everything we do. It could be about regulation, it could be the way we charge customers, it could be about the business processes we use. So if you try to sort of put a half a dozen or ten things down that encapsulate your whole business, it's quite difficult. So the way I've tried to do it, and maybe the next time if you invite me again, I can bring the slide, but w w in Anglian we've come up with a, a wheel of outcomes, and there's about ten, ten outcomes, and I'm sure we're all hitting similar areas but I've tried to connect an innovation theme uh, to that so the, the, the issue about water resources and, and depletion of resources I've, I've put a bubble next to it saying you know we need to identify different ways of uh, getting fresh water which might be desalination it might be recharging our underground aquifers it might be working more creatively with neighboring water companies and so on um, and I think ownership and engagement, if, if you haven't got ownership and support from directors and boards, then it doesn't matter how hard you try, you can't have a totally successful bottom-up innovation process. I think you need a combination of top-down strategic support and also allowing people in the organisation to, to be uh, creative and to uh, you know try things. And, and, and if you fail now and again, then... At least you had a go, but overall, if there's enough benefit, then it's a virtuous circle. Um, <clears throat> and I think open communication with regulators is, is really important. Uh, and Nick touched upon it about uh, putting together more convincing business cases, uh, not necessarily just for a five-year opportunity, but why don't we start building on our 25-year strategic direction statements and actually building longer-term business cases and demonstrating to regulators and our customers that they make sense. So I think the proportion of investment in short and long term, it is 
probably 75% on the shorter term stuff that we get a return in the five years. But there is a, a, a chunk that I think we should all support. And maybe the trick is to do it through collaboration. So we actually leverage funds and get more meaningful uh, long-term innovation. Um, and I think allowing organisations into our business. Um, typically water companies, uh, they make friends with a handful of big companies that have been around for years and I'm sure they're all great but often they're not the best innovators so there are lots of small companies out there that have just started up or you know it might have spun out of a university and, and they're not actually on our supply chain uh, systems yet so I think that we need to kind of get that right to, to get some kind of synergy between the big more established supply chain companies and allowing some of these more innovative companies through, um, which has really been a, a tough, uh, tough for some of these companies that are out there, which is one of the reasons we set up the Water Innovation Network in Anglian. Um, which really leads on to the last point, um, that some of our supply chain processes are a bit uh, inflexible, and, and there, there are a number of tick boxes where, you know, how long companies have been around, what their track record is, they're all important, but how can we also give visibility to, to new and innovative companies? Um, it's a bit of a weird diagram, this, but it, 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 to me it says a lot. This, the, 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 on the left, in the, if you go back 10 years, water companies had quite significant R&D budgets and, and quite big teams, and we used to generate loads of intellectual property uh, and, and, you know, we've attempted to license it and, 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 and operate more like large growth industries. Um, we, we did some good stuff. Um, but if you move to the right, we're moving more towards this open innovation model. So we then went to partnering, you know, working with partners and doing uh, innovation together. Uh, and then getting groups of people together, yeah. may, maybe a number of water companies. Uh, and, and somebody from uh, the gas industry, for example, and, and trying to work together. But this open innovation model, uh, which is the, the picture on the right, is, is really saying, I've got this problem, I want low cost, low carbon, reliable desalination, for example. And, and often you can't get the people, you can't find the right people, and, and you sort of do half a job. So there's a real challenge in that because I believe that the benefits by doing things in an open way are, are far greater, but the, the level of control you've got uh, of the project is, is, is less. There's no meaning in the crossover point, by the way, because somebody asked me that question last time. But really, I think it's just getting the message. And at Anglian, we're certainly moving across to this more open innovation model. <coughs> um, so I think at the moment in Anglian there's, there's sort of three key areas that is driving innovation. One, it's our core innovation program that we have made visible to the regulator. So we're going to invest in these things. And um, we've done those in, you know, um, a traditional sense, more collaboration. The second area is how do we engage our workforce? How do we engage the people in Anglian across the, the organisation to to do more innovation. And then the third one is around how do we engage the supply chain to drive innovation into the company. So we've tried to create this, this funnel, funnel ideas in, filter out the things that are not so good and concentrate on the real winners. Um, and, and this should allow more radical innovation. Um, <coughs> that's a, a typical funnel. Uh, how am I doing for time? Okay, for a few minutes. A few minutes, okay. Yeah. Um, so it's really trying to open up the, the front end of this funnel and get more stuff in, but narrow it down uh, to, 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 to get a few uh, well-implemented projects uh, that hit all the, the, the buttons. Um, we've got a number of um, what we call our Love Every Drop strategy goals. Uh, Love Every Drop is our uh, strategy to get closer to customers, be more open as a company, and, and, and really step away or ahead of the regulatory process somehow and, and try and be on the front foot. So this is what we've ended up with. 
things like uh, reducing the amount of embodied carbon in new structures uh, and new capital solutions by 50%, which is a huge shift. Um, we want 100% satisfied customers. Um, we want to um, reduce our operational carbon by 10%. And that's mainly electricity, so there's some huge challenges there. Um, be a leading employer uh, and, and bring in organisations that we may not have worked with in the past. No pollutions, no accidents, and so on and so forth. So the, the message here really is to have an effective innovation programme. Suppliers, organisations out there need to understand what our key priorities are. If they don't do that, they, they, they're second guessing. Um, the, 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 the map at the top is, is some of the kind of things that we want to achieve as Anglian Water, but I'll not go into great detail, but just for example, on, on the right there, in 20 years' time, we've got an aspiration to have assets that are fully automated and they're self-maintaining. Uh, not quite sure how that's going to work, but, you know, pipes that repair themselves, if you've got that vision, it does actually drive a lot of innovation. And then in the middle, we've got things like real-time monitoring of networks and, and that kind of thing that a lot of companies are now moving towards. <laughs> but it, it's also about business processes, the service we provide, culture, you know, in, in a, a risk-averse uh, industry, which is often it's perceived as, how do we actually make people more receptive to innovation and manage it uh, better? So the Water Innovation Network, we, uh, UK Seed is a company that we've worked with, the UK Centre for Environmental and Economic Development. They spun out of the old uh, RDAs, which was EDA in the east of England, um, and we formed a partnership. This, this organisation helps new businesses get off the ground. They provide premises for them. They've got access to funding uh, and things like that. We've got knowledge about our challenges We've got expertise, we've got access, we can provide organisations with access to our assets and um, our service. So together it's formed a partnership. <coughs> um, but the key to it is that as well as presenting to the supply chain in, in a really visible way what your challenges are, it's important that there's a process behind it as well, um, and which is this. Uh, apologies if you can't read it. But what we've done is we've set up a steering group of experts in Anglian Water, uh, people from different parts of the business. Um, and, and we hold events on various key themes. It could be um, drought, could be uh, recover renewable energy, that kind of thing. Uh, and we, we, we openly invite companies along. Uh, but we don't just have a, a seminar and say that was a good chat. We, we invite companies to provide in a quite a detailed uh, submission what their offering is how's it going to meet our carbon challenge how's it going to reduce capex opex how's it going to improve customer service and we've, we've set up a steering group that meets on a monthly basis to assess all these ideas um, and whether the answer is no or whether the answer is yes we'll have a further look we, we make sure we respond to every organization and what that does it, it provides trust and, and the organisation and network's grown quite significantly. So we've got over 300 companies now engaged in this process. And, and out of the other end, after about a year and a half, we've got about eight to 10 really good solutions that have gone into the business, either as designs, operational practice changes, um, it could be things in our uh, engineering specification, uh, things in our customer service arena, it could be anything. Um, so we, we, we are proud of it and uh, we think it's a model that uh, the industry could learn from and benefit from. Nearly there. So uh, that, that's some of the ideas. I'm not going into great detail about that. We want success for exploitation. Moving forward, um, we want to strengthen our network of champions. So the challenge with innovation in the water industry is we call it the valley of death. When, when a project gets to a certain stage, when you want to exploit it, you do get a lot of resistance. And if you can get champions in ops and people in the wider business to support you and work with you, it often gets you through that valley of death. 
So we're trying to expand that network of champions. And the other thing, learning from other industries. A um, lot of synergy, for example, between energy and water. Uh, most of the water that's treated in Europe's used for power. There's a lot of heat from power that we could put through our networks and move heat to our communities and things like that. So, um, and, collab and the final point is, uh, is collaboration. Uh, I, I believe that there's a huge amount of innovation we could move quicker by collaborating with other water companies. And the real benefit to the company is the way you exploit the innovation. There's no real benefit in the idea, it's the way you exploit it, so more potential for that. Thank you. I am keen to make it, uh, uh, again, interactive. Maybe we'll have time for a, one quick uh, question and answer. Uh, there were a couple of questions that uh, uh, the audience has put forward around stick versus the carrot. Do you need an efficiency challenge? or do you need uh, additional allowances to actually stimulate uh, innovation? I think both. Um, I don't believe in slush funds. I don't believe in uh, creating a fund to spend on innovation. I actually think if you've got tough capex and opex, totex challenges, for example, it does drive people. Um, on the other hand, uh, I think one of Nick's earlier points was if, if the regulator's <laughs> more sympathetic with some of our longer term type innovation, we might not get the reward in the five years, but long term for the industry, that, that could be good. So I think there's scope to do both. Okay, excellent.